What now SpaceX? Starship updates, Roberts Road construction and Blue Origin progress update. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. As always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. The Starship is dead, long live the Starship. After Wednesday's test in Boca Chica, pressure testing the tank section, an anomaly happened which resulted in the total loss of the prototype. Right after the events had unfolded, SpaceX announced that the prototype phase would continue with a new and improved flight design. Mark III seems to be the new king when it comes to flight test candidates. But where is Mark III and what will be different? How will SpaceX continue from here on? What are the lessons learned and will the progress maybe happen in a different location? As we already had an in-depth analysis of the anomaly event in the last episode, I won't do another deep dive into what happened. One thing I do want to point out again though is that the weak spot seems to have been a weld between the uppermost ring with the attached top bulkhead and the rest of the tank section. So the logical approach would be to change manufacturing and maybe even the material, right? Right, don't worry, this is not turning into a Tesla channel, but this one might be directly related to the next Starship prototype. Behold the Cybertruck. Unveiled on Thursday evening, this is Tesla's latest contribution to the newly established electric pickup truck market. Introduced as having an exoskeleton and not a traditional chassis construction, Musk stated at the event that the Cybertruck would be manufactured out of a special kind of stainless steel. The same that Starship will be made of from now on. Improved over 301 stainless, the steel that Mark I was made of. Stronger and more flexible. They even hit the truck with a sledgehammer on stage and it didn't even leave a visible dent, whereas the traditional pickup door was wrecked after three hits. Just as a side note, Musk also said that there will be a pressurized edition of the Cybertruck and that SpaceX would be planning to use the truck on Mars as a rover. Now let's get back to SpaceX here. To be precise, to Cocoa, Florida. John Winkop did an awesome job again making video footage of the progress on Mark II with his trusty drone. As you can see, SpaceX has been busy in Cocoa, even though we of course lately concentrated mainly on Boca Chica, as we all expected a first Starship test to happen in Texas and not in Florida. Now that Boca Chica for now is back to building water towers, Coco is becoming much more interesting again. We can see the whole site being very busy. A top dome has been installed on Mark II and work seems to be pretty far ahead already. But how does this fit together with Elon's statement that Mark III will be the next possible candidate and that a lot would change with the next generation of prototypes? This is Mark II and in theory it shouldn't fly either, right? Well, not if it was built like Mark I was. It seems though that SpaceX is already changing the approach. A lot of the rings that were laying around have been cut into pieces and scrapped. Especially if we look at a comparison of the footage from earlier last week to the end of last week. A lot of the rings have disappeared. A lot of portable generators are being transported off-site. SpaceX seems to be redecorating or shifting manufacturing. If SpaceX's statement of using Mark III for first flight tests is correct, there would not be any use for Mark II anymore. This would fit the observation that there seems to have been zero progress on any of the segments in the last week. Is SpaceX preparing to make double height single piece rings the new standard to reduce welds even further? SpaceX stated at the Cybertruck presentation that the new stainless steel was manufactured in-house. Scrapping Mark 1 and 2 to move on to new stainless steel double size rings and a different flight design would make sense after the anomaly. Would this new and improved Starship be made at the Coco site though, or will SpaceX move production to its new site now? This would be the perfect opportunity. At Roberts Road, no transportation to KSC would be needed. They could do a fresh start with different machines and equipment and fully embrace the new idea. David Lavoy was busy for What About It again, getting tons of pictures at Kennedy Space Center, trying to find out how far SpaceX has gone since the last update I made on Roberts Road. And there has been quite the progress at the new site. Loads of tools, big cranes, tents, rigs, containers and lots of steel. A fence going up around the property. A bulkhead sitting in one of the tents. 
generators, workers, cars. If you ask me, this is likely where Mark IV, the Florida second generation prototype, will be built. Not at the old Coco site. My prediction for the old site is that we will soon see a never-ending truck parade from there to Roberts Road, getting all the equipment, resources and tools to the new site. All they need to work on a prototype is there too. It would make little sense to continue at a site that makes a costly and difficult prototype transfer to KSC a necessity. The new site is very close to Pad 39A. Only Roberts Road itself would need an upgrade. Wait, I take that back. The road is almost done as well. A few weeks ago, this road you see here was a third of the widths it is now and not capable of supporting a Starship construction site. Now it is large and well prepared. Prepared for a Starship and a Super Heavy being moved over it. SpaceX has been working very fast and mostly unnoticed by the public. We're used to seeing every little bit of progress in Boca Chica thanks to Mary from nasaspaceflight.com, Louis from Lab Padre, S Padre, Austin Barnard and many many others. Boca Chica is so well covered that no one seemed to show any interest in the other major site. Roberts Road at Kennedy Space Center is a prime real estate when it comes to rocket construction. In fact much better suited for test flights than Boca Chica. All the infrastructure is there already. Even an Air Force base scouting the weather and maybe most importantly no local residents within the blast zone of a possible RUD. This is not to say that Boca Chica now is less important, on the contrary. To make it very clear that SpaceX intends to launch Starship and Super Heavy boosters out of Boca Chica, they recently attached a new sign to the fence surrounding the launch site. Another very important site still needed at Kennedy Space Center is the launch site. Where Boca Chica made incredible progress with the expanded launch facility, the CAPE is trying to reduce the lead every day. As you can see here, the Starship launch mount at Pad 39A is growing rapidly. And it looks quite different from what we can see in Boca Chica. Where the launch mount in Boca Chica has about the diameter of the Starship itself, the one at Pad 39A seems to be at least double the width. Is this an indicator for Super Heavy? Is this what we will see being built on the newly built site next to the Starship landing pad in Boca Chica? I said it before, the launch mount in Boca Chica does not look nearly big enough to support a full Starship and Super Heavy stack. The one at Pad 39A looks much more suited for such a task. My guess is that SpaceX will be building a permanent launch mount here, not a temporary solution. It would make sense, as building structures at an actively used launch pad is more difficult than in the dunes of Boca Chica, where you do not have to pay attention to any launch schedule going on parallel to the construction work. So this might be the site where we will get a first look at an actual Starship launch pad and not an intermediate solution as in Boca Chica. All this shows that SpaceX in fact was right when stating that the recent anomaly in Boca Chica was not a serious setback at all. We tend to forget that there are more sites than one for prototype construction as the community in Boca Chica hands down is doing an awesome job of covering the progress. Florida is closer to being the site for the inaugural flight than ever before. I will try to cover that second site as much as I can and I am asking the community to actively support me. If you're a resident of the area and have access to Kennedy Space Center or if you know a possible location for a webcam and are willing to organize a build-up of a community in the area, contact me. The Boca Chica community has done a wonderful job covering the SpaceX progress. Let's try to do that in Florida as well. If you're a Boca Chica community member and you're willing to help the guys in Florida, do so. Let's get Florida up to the Boca Chica level of dedication. The email is whataboutit.contact at gmail.com. And as always, if you like this update, click the like button and subscribe, it helps a lot. Blue Origin Progress Update The United States are simply the center of forefront rocket development again. What happened 60 years ago is repeating itself right now. Every American can be damn proud of what's happening there right now, as it's not only SpaceX doing cutting edge work, Blue Origin is gearing up as well. The horizontal integration building at Blue Origin's launch complex is growing incredibly fast and let me tell you, the thing will be huge. New Glenn will be made here. The second US orbital rocket to hopefully achieve a booster landing. Now I know it's nothing like a Starship, but this is exactly how SpaceX started too. It is very promising and it's the only logical thing to do right now. 
Frankly, this puts Blue Origin ahead of every other US-based launch provider except for SpaceX. This might seem late and too little for some, but nonetheless being second is far from being last. This building will be used for flight preparation, stacking, payload integration and maybe even for refurbishing of flown New Glenn boosters. It will hopefully be a very busy site in the coming years, giving Blue Origin the needed experience and knowledge to then continue onwards to New Armstrong, the next level fully reusable launch system. The gigantic water tower for the sound suppressing system is going up as well. Blue Origin is building a fully equipped launch site here, not integrating into an existing one. It's going to be quite the site when it's finished and I am very much looking forward to the first test launches from the site. It will be incredible to see Blue Origin attempt to go on par with the Falcon family of rockets. Last but not least, the assembly facility in direct vicinity to Roberts Road is in the final steps of construction already. It won't be long before Blue Origin will be able to start manufacturing first boosters and upper stages at the facility. As stated before, the United States space industry has two strong newcomers getting ready for the future right now. It's getting more and more incredible to witness the continued effort of SpaceX and Blue Origin to speed up our progress into a new era of spaceflight. Expandable rockets belong to the past and anyone even developing new ones should rethink what they're doing right now. A change has already happened and anyone not following the new direction will soon belong to a glorious but soon to be finished part of spaceflight history. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will SpaceX soon abandon the Coco site? And what do you think about Blue Origin's efforts in closing the gap to SpaceX in the race for a fully reusable rocket? As always, tell me in the comments. And it's already over again. Another episode watched and the next one will have to wait until Thursday. But what makes this steady release of updates possible in the first place? It stands and falls with helpers, as the community in Boca Chica is helping each other documenting history, patrons are helping me in the same way. They are the mortar between the bricks, steadily building the channel with knowledge, help and last but not least funding. And again we have new members on the ever growing team What About It. Everybody please give a warm welcome to Christopher Hefferin, Chris Cheshire and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button because that helps the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. After Wednesday's alarm and Alarmony. <laughs> there it is again. The alarmony. Right after the test. Right after the advent. Right after the advent. <laughs> and it's already open again. Ah, uh, no. Hefferin. Hefferin.